The olden days. The olden days, you didn't have shoes. Okay. Uh -huh. In the olden days, when wishing was still of some use, so left the king. He had several beautiful daughters, but the youngest was so fair that even the sun himself, who has seen so many wonders, could not help marveling every time he looked into her face. Near the king's palace lay a large dark forest. And there, under an old linden tree, was a well. When the day was hot, the little princess would go off into this forest and sit at the rim of the cool well. There she would play with her golden ball, tossing it up and catching it deftly in her little hands. This was her favorite game, and she never tired of it. Now it happened one day that as the princess tossed her golden ball into the air, it did not fall into her uplifted hands as usual. Instead, it fell to the ground near the edge of the well and rolled in. Plunk! Splash! The golden ball was gone! The well was deep and the princess knew it. She felt sure she would never see her beautiful ball again. So she cried and cried and could not stop. And in the midst of her weeping, she heard a voice behind her. What is the matter, little princess? Your turn from the a heart of stone. And when she looked to see where the voice came from, there was nothing but a frog stretching his thick, ugly head out of the water. Oh, it's you, you old water splasher. I'm kind because my golden ball has fallen into the well. Never mind. Don't cry. I can help you. But what will you give me if I fetch up your ball again? Whenever you wish, dear old frog, any of my clothes and clothes and pearls and jewels, or even the golden crown that I wear. Now your clothes are pearls and gold, and your home crown are not for me. But if you love me, under the water. <laughs> but after a while he came to the surface again with the ball in his mouth and he dropped it on the grass at the feet of the princess. Well, the princess was wild with joy when she saw her pretty placing again and she caught it up and ran off with it. Stop, stop, take me with you. I can't run as fast as you. <laughs> but it was of no use for croak croak after her loud, as loud as he could. She would not listen to him. Instead she hurried home where she soon forgot all about the poor frog, who now had to go back into his well again. Not one 
to do it, but she had to obey. When she opened the door, the frog popped in and followed her until she reached the chair. Then he sat there and said, Let me have to sit by you. <laughs> When once the frog was on the chair, he wanted to get on the table. And there he sat and said, Let's push your home a little near, that we need to get a little real playmate. The princess shuddered, but she had to do it. The frog enjoyed the meal and ate heartily, but the poor girl could not swallow a single bite. I have had enough now. I am tired. I have had enough now. I, I am tired. Take me to your room, carry me to your room, while I go to sleep. <laughs> then the princess began to cry. It had been hard enough to touch the cold, fat frog, and worse still to have him eat out of her plate. To have him beside her in her little bed was more than she could bear. I want to go to bed! Take me there and tuck me in! Thank you. I hope you're in trouble and So she picked up and carried him upstairs and put him in a corner and when she had lain down to sleep he came creeping up saying I am tired and the floor is too hard I have as much right as you to sleep in a nice up bed lift me up or I will tell your father at this the princess was bitterly angry but she, <laughs> <laughs> but she picked him up and put him at the foot of her bed there he stayed all night but when the dark was graying into daylight, the frog jumped down from the bed, out of the door and away. She knew not where. The next night it was the same. The frog came back, knocked at the door, and said, Youngest daughter, I'll be keeping open the door for me. Mind your words, the door was great. Open the door for me. There was nothing for her to do but to let him in. Again, he ate out of her plate, sipped out of her golden cup, and again, he slept at the foot of her bed. In the morning, he went away as before. <laughs> the third night, he came again. This time, he was not content to sleep at her feet. <laughs> I want to sleep under your feet. I think I like it better there. The girl thought she would never be able to sleep with a horrid, damp, frog-like frog under her pillow. She began to weep softly to herself and couldn't stop until at last she had cried herself to sleep. When morning came, the frog crept out from under her pillow and hopped off the bed. But as soon as his feet touched the floor, something happened to him. In that moment, he was no longer a cool, fat, bald, white frog, a young prince with handsome, friendly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I wasn't what to sleep with that seemed to be. If we could have a woman be with you, no one but you could break the spell, little princess. And I'm going to read you at the well for you to help me. The princess was speechless with surprise, <laughs> but her eyes sparkled. <laughs> Will you let me be your playmate now? Mind your words at the old well spring. At this, the princess laughed too, and they both went out to play with the golden ball. <laughs> For years, they were the best of friends and the happiest of playmates. And it is not hard to guess, I'm sure, that when they were grown up, they were married and lived happily ever after. <laughs>
When the girl arrived, the king took her to a room which was full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a reel, and said, Are in 
Get ready to run, Ray.
Raymond, run, buddy. Run, Betty. All right, Tara. Did you run to the base? All right. Good job, Tara. <laughs> Get ready to run, buddy. As soon as he hits the ball, run to the home plate. I saw her. Hey, Mom! Go, Ray, Ray! Ray, Ray, Ray! She off it. Okay. Give me five. Good job, Raymond. You got you got all the way around the home. She knew where to